Yes, the Kashmiris, if you look into, trace back to the history, they were the Brahmins. And you look into India, Kerala, in 628 CE, that is 628 AD, according to the Christians, they say 628 AD, the first masjid was built in 628 CE in Kerala. And Malayalam speaking people, they became Muslims. Yes, the king of the Kerala, Kurunganallur, he became a Muslim and all of his tribes became Muslims. Tamil Nadu, let us look into Tamil Nadu. In fact, I speak Tamil at home. I am still not able to connect my history. I am trying and asking, where did people actually choose at which time and I'm trying to do the research and I came to know there's something beautiful just 200 250 years ago there was this man called man called Muhammad Yusuf Khan I don't think many of them have heard of this Muhammad Yusuf Khan his history is unknown he was a man from the family of Pillayar Pillaywal they say Pillaywal he chose Islam. Why? To fight against all sort of injustice, social injustice. You know, to say that I am from this, uh, uh, you know, this caste and you are from the low caste. All of these things was not supposed to be done, but it was happening in India. So this man from the Pillaywal community, he chose Islam. He fought against the Palaikar. And then he even fought against the Britishers. He was a threat to the Britishers. He had a very big team, very big fort and all of this. The Britishers caught him. They wanted to kill him. They hanged him but he did not die. Guess what they did? They cut him into seven pieces and they buried in the land of Tamil Nadu. And this story of Khan Sahib, Muhammad Yusuf Khan, Khan Sahib, it is actually picturized in the movie called Maradhanayagam the upcoming movie of Kamal Hassan Maradhanayagam and in fact that is the story of Muhammad Yusuf Khan which the people who are holding to a high caste they don't want this movie to be released they don't want this movie to be released but in case if this movie is released it's going to open the doors for a lot of things history of India would be revealed where did we all become Muslims did we come from Saudi we are not Saudis. I don't speak Arabic language in my house. And I'm sure none of you, except for some people who have come from Arabia. The people, the native Indians, they chose this religion Islam as a solution for their problems. So I'm here to bring out this subject by saying, Islam, why we chose this topic is that in our times where family relationships, family values is all deteriorating, Islam is talking about family life. Islam is talking about God consciousness. Islam is talking about your neighbor. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was a wonderful role model. And I'm sure if anybody goes to this, the life of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, you can feel that he came to fulfill the message of all the prophets. He was never against anyone. He said, me and Jesus are brothers. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, me and Jesus are brothers. So we don't have hatred. I would request all of the people to understand Islam. And Islam is not just talking about some faith just for you to keep it in your heart. No. It is a religion which brings into implementation. Immediate change in the system. How many of us know? There is this book called Why Go for Conversion written by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, he wrote this book Why Go for Conversion. In that book, he is saying you people, you either become a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim. And he says in Islam, you find justice. Periyar in one of his talk, he said, Ina Islam in To demolish all, coin, all kinds of social injustice, Islam is the only medicine. Who is saying that? An atheist is saying that. So, we as Muslims, we are against idolatry. Without any atom of doubt, I'm saying, it is not to hurt anyone's feelings. It is only because we don't consider the idols to be God. We are against worshipping human beings. It's only because we don't consider the human beings as God. How can a man called Nityananda can be a God? 
can he be god he has got all human weakness it is the people's problem to consider him to be god and we don't consider animals to be god we don't consider the snake to be god we don't consider the cow to be god yes this is our stance did the cow create the sun the moon stars or anything did it create me no so while being say while saying this we are not here to hurt anyone's feelings but this is the reality which is mentioned in the scriptures which all the people have to acknowledge and to understand islam has come to fulfill that final message it has come to fulfill what jesus christ said it has come to fulfill what moses said it has come to fill, fulfill what 124000 prophets have said so with this i end my talk by praising allah subhanahu wa taala for giving this wonderful opportunity and also by reciting the verse from the quran ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu alqulub verily the hearts finds peace the hearts finds rest in the remembrance of lord i will keep the open and question answers to be very welcoming anyone has got any question i will not feel offended i will just quote from the quran and from the hadith the things that we have learned wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin other uh, has said we must not call islam as a religion but rather we must call as a lifeline that is his opinion that is his opinion but in the quran allah says chapter number 3 verse number 19 verily the religion accepted in the sight of allah is islam can anybody say it in arabic in deen in the allah al islam allah says allah is calling it as a deen in the deen in the allah al islam verily the religion acceptable in the sight of allah is islam so allah is saying this so now we must not tamper the word we must not give a new meaning and because of people giving a new meaning we have found so many sects and factions amongst the muslims is when a person starts with something new that becomes a religion in itself so as a muslim we can limit our understanding to what quran is saying so the quran is saying in chapter number 3 verse number 19 that in the din in the allah in islam verily the religion accepted in the sight of allah is islam and one more place allah says in chapter number 3 verse number 85 وَمَن يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَن يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whosoever seeks a religion other than Islam as a religion it will never be accepted from him and in the hereafter he will be amongst the losers who is saying this? who is saying this? this is Allah's word so what we have to understand and what Quran is saying what Allah is saying Allah is saying this is a religion هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى والدين الحق it is allah who has sent this messenger with the truth with the guidance and the religion of truth allah is saying religion of truth so we must try to understand the religion our religion islam based on the quran and based on the teachings of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam today if you see from kashmir to kanyakumari there are so many varieties of muslims so many factions so many sects so many groups each one rejoicing with what they have got as allah is saying each one is rejoicing with what they have got why are they rejoicing they feel that they are right but what we must be doing is we must refer back to quran and to the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the quran says in surah an-nisa chapter number 4 verse number 59 he says اتيو يا ايها الذين امنوا اتيو الله واتيو الرسول واولي الامر منكم او يو هو بيليف اوبي الله اند اوبي ذا ميسنجر اند ذوز هو ار ان اوتوريتي اوفر يو اند اف يو فايند اني ديفرنس امونغست يو ذا ريتن باك تو الله اند ذس ميسنجر اند ذات وود جيف يو ذا ريزلت اند بيفور ذات الله سيز اف يو بيليف ان الله اند ذا لاست دي ذا ريتن باك تو الله اند ذس ميسنجر سو وينيفر وي فايند اني ديفرنس we have to bring the quran and we have to bring the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his life his teachings and we can sort out the problem so with this the lifeline the word that was introduced by the gentleman is not from the teachings of the quran 
So we will remain using the word Deen, the religion, and we must not tamper with the meanings of it. Yes. A wonderful thing, that is crucial. That is crucial. What you have posted, that is the subject. Muslims can bring peace to the society only if they practice Islam. Today's Muslims, what is happening? Don't feel offended. Anybody, whoever is here, please don't feel offended. These are the realities that we are facing. Today's time, in Bangalore, it is very easy to identify a Muslim locality. Yes or no? What are the indications to find the Muslim locality? The dirtiest place, it's fuming of kebabs and sheik and pal and all this stuff, smelling, very unclean, it is not kept well, children are always fighting, youngsters are going on bikes and triples, skidding and falling, almost coming and banging into us. So this is the Muslim society now. Let us not have double standards. When we are talking about something wrong, we address it with genuineness. We must not be favoring this Muslim locality. There are so many wrong things which is happening here. Why did this happen? Why is all of this happening? Because they are not following Islam. We agree to that. Well, the Prophet said, At-Tahuru Shatrul Iman. Verily, cleanliness is half the Iman. Cleanliness is half the Iman. The Prophet did not leave any room for anything. If we have to go to the masjid, we have to make wudu, we have to be in guzul status, we should be clean. If at all we visit the toilet, we have to do istinja, we have to clean our private parts. All of these things are there. You cannot have garlic or onions and enter the masjid. We can't have onions or garlic and enter the masjid. But what's happening here? When the azan is been given, when the ikama is been given, our Muslim people, they want to have the last puff. They want to have the last puff. Cigarette. Cigarette is haram in Islam. Cigarette is haram in Islam. Anything that can cause injury or harm to anyone's health. In fact, cigarette is more dangerous for passive smokers. For a person who is there sitting next to a person who is an active smoker, it is more injurious for him. And cigarette is haram. More than 400 scholars in the world today have addressed this and called it as haram. Yes, it was in one time that it was considered as only makru. Cigarette was considered as makru because it was involving israf, wasting, extravagance. That was the time. They did not know that because of smoking, it can lead to cancer. But today, it's an evident fact, established scientific revealing that smoking leads to cancer. So today it's very clear. I'm telling my dear young ones, our young youngsters, young Muslims, you should not even go near cigarettes. You'll all promise, inshallah, that you will not touch cigarettes in your life. And you should advise your people. You must advise your friends. Why I'm asking the college students? Because I know the pressure in college. When I went to National College Jainagar, the first day, the first day I went to college, I found my own friend from 10th standard. He was there with a gang of cigarette smoking. And I was a person who was left out. If I have to be one among them, if I have to be accepted by them, then I have to do the things that they do. Since I was not a smoker, I was not accepted by them. So because of winning your friends, because of befriending them, sometimes we tend to